Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me? Well, after a weekend of non-stop rest and recuperation, I am back, fully refreshed and ready once again to fight the good fight. Unfortunately, I must warn you that the Competition and Markets Authority bombshell that landed on the UK demolition industry uh, late last week will likely dominate proceedings for the foreseeable future. However, we do have some terrific non-CMA content for you as well, including our first Hillhead exhibition stand walk around with those fine folks at Liebherr. Uh, so without further ado, let me post the question of the day. Roll the intro and get this show on the road. Welcome to The Great Class Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Monday, the 27th of June, and as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, the CMA collusion probe, after the blast comes the fallout. HS2 pushes the compaction technology envelope. We will take a leisurely stroll around Leap Air Stand at last week's uh, Hillhead Show, and Dynapack is already getting set for Bauma 2022. We'll get to all of that in just a second, but first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday on this day of days. Happy birthday! And it's many happy returns to Jim Fuller, the so-called godfather of surf guitar, and also to film producer J.J. Abrams. Happy birthday also to TV's super nanny, Joe Frost, to former Spider-Man Tobey Maguire, and to the man known in Real Madrid circles simply as the King of Spain, super striker Raul. Many happy returns to them, one and all. Now, let me just make sure I've got all my ducks in a row here. Here we go. Um, just had a comment in from, um, let's have a look. Uh, Chris Day, good to meet you too, uh, sir. Uh, thank you very much indeed for being here today. Um, we're going to get straight on with this. Uh, I've just posted a link which will become relevant in just a second. As we reported on Friday last week, the Competition and Markets Authority has released the provisional findings of its three-year investigation into bid rigging and price fixing within the UK demolition industry. A total of 10 companies, all of them members of the National Federation of Demolition Contractors, have been named by the CMA and eight have admitted involvement. Those eight are Brown & Mason, Cantillon, Clifford Devlin, DSM, John F. Hunt, Kelpray, McGee and Scudder. Both Erith Group, uh, both Erith Group and Scrib Group are also named by the CMA, but have not admitted any involvement. And the CMA stresses that it should be should not be assumed that they have broken the law. Within minutes of the CMA announcement, the once good name of them uh, of most of the uh, demolition industry was being. Let me try that again. Within minutes of the CMA announcement, the once good name of the, of the demolition industry was being dragged through the media mud. The UK demolition industry has not made so many TV and newspaper headlines since February 2016 and the death of four demolition workers at the Didcot A power station. Uh, between uh, Friday morning and now, I've personally taken calls from the Times and the BBC, and it, it's believed that there is actually a documentary show on the subject of the CMA investigation in the works as well. Uh, I'm also expecting to speak to the Times again today. But while the eight companies that have admitted guilt await their fate and the imposition of potentially mammoth financial penalties, the wider demolition industry will be more focused upon the likely fallout from the initial explosion. The first to feel the effects should be the National Federation of Demolition Contractors, which counts all 10 companies implicated in the investigation among its membership. Now, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, estimates suggested that there was between 550 and 600 demolition companies active in the UK. The NFDC has a membership of around 145 corporate members. The fact that the NFDC accounts for around 25% of all demolition companies, but 100% of all those implicated in the CMA investigation, should surely raise further questions. Furthermore, the companies named by the CMA include those of two on, uh, NFDC honorary life vice presidents, 
one of them the immediate past president who now sits on the board of the CITB. The Federation issued a hollow statement on Friday that spoke of codes of conduct, but that made no mention of reprimand or sanction for those that have brought the industry into disrepute. And if the optics were not already bad enough, it's worth noting that the NFCC will soon be packing its buckets and spades before heading to, of all places, Monte Carlo for its annual convention. Regardless of whether those mired in the CMA probe will be, in, will be in attendance, this will surely be seen as the NFDC thumbing its nose at the authorities while it seeks to prefer, preserve its membership. Now, it's virtually impossible to place a positive spin on this situation, particularly for those contractors and trade bodies that have taken the full force of the CMA blast. But if you look hard enough, there is a faint light at the end of this, of this especially long and dark tunnel. For one thing, those companies that have operated in the shadow of the larger companies implicated in the CMA investigation now have a chance to shine. The stench of collusion will stick to any contractors that are ultimately prosecuted and fined, and they will likely find it more difficult to make it onto tender lists. That could work to the advantage of those many superb companies that have been kept waiting in the industry wings. And there's another positive, if you look hard enough. The industry now has an opportunity to start afresh, to make sweeping changes, to tear down established structures and practices, and to create a transparent post-CMA industry of which we can all once again be proud. Now, it won't be easy, and any such suggestion will be met with resistance from the industry's old guard, the same old guard that was at the helm when the alleged price fixing was taking place, the same old guard that remains in place while the industry's reputation is picked over like so much carrion. The demolition sector has the opportunity to build back better, to reform and renew, and to create a sector that is befitting the modern age. But it will never do so, employing the systems, procedures, structures, and people that led us unwittingly to this watershed moment in the industry's history. Now, it will come as no surprise to learn that the CMA um, probe is the subject of my weekly column today. If you'd like to read that, you can find it uh, using the link that I've just posted in the chat, or you can just head over to demolitionnews.com, where it is currently the lead story. And don't forget, I've actually written a book that charts the CMA investigation from its very beginnings back in March 2019. You can buy a copy of that if you wish at buymeacoffee.com forward slash demolition news miller gt series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting edge intelligent coupler technology increasing job site safety machine versatility and productivity it's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford to find out more visit millergroundbreaking.com now, we've spoken a lot on this show about the way in which the Mammoth HS2 project is pushing the equipment envelope, how it's embracing technology, and how it, is, how it may encourage the return of the long-lost motor scraper. But there's another aspect of HS2 equipment that we have not touched upon previously, compaction. With trains running at such high speeds, optimum and precise compaction is a vital consideration. And as you're about to see, compaction experts BOMAG have got the project covered. On a high speed train, you don't want any movement of the rail line. Any minor movement, even, even millimetres, can be very disruptive. But with this sort of technology, you're, you're guaranteeing that the whole area has been surveyed and it is done correctly. The end site engineer can be sat in his office and he can connect to that machine, see any problems with the machine, and he can also solve the problems, upload files, anything like that, without going near the operator. So if you look at it from a risk perspective, people-plant interface is one of the key challenges that we've got, because that's a potential risk between machines coming into contact with people. So if we reduce the number of machines, we have less potential for those instances. Saving time, time and, and, and money and fuel with machine control is, is, is huge. The client has access to the lifetime data. You've got nothing to hide. Key for Biomag is our rolling stiffness measurement, which is we call E-Vibe. Uh, this is picked up from sensors that are actually built into the drum and to the equipment that's in the machine. 
Uh, by using this ton of technology, it means you get a complete surface area coverage of the stiffness value from the drum. And then that gives him a physical compaction value inside the cab, so he can see how hard the, the ground is underneath the drum. That means you can reduce the amount of testing that's done on site, which saves time, uh, it saves money, but also reduces the amount of people that need to be on site in a potentially dangerous area. And with the Bowmap system, it can be adapted to other rollers or other machines. But when it's on the bow mag roller, you can get all the extra information of compaction rates and, and values, and it, it, it's just, it's like the missing, for me, it's the missing link for machine, with machine control within the industry. Bow mag are instrumental, um, so we, we rely on bow mag's uh, ability to think outside the box uh, for us. They offer solutions that, that we don't see from, from others in the market, uh, as the bow map system, for one example. Uh, has been game-changing uh, for, for a customer of ours in the south. They've managed to capture uh, lots of data for uh, the, the rate of compaction, uh, the amount of passes, um, and it's really helped improve productivity on their project. So it normally takes around 10 to 15 minutes to, to train the operators, uh, and the thing we say to them all is paint the screen green because that means when the targets are set, when that screen shows green, you've met all your targets. It's easier to, to access, it's very easy. It's not complicated, it's an easy app. Here we're set to a minimum um, of three passes. Once they've done three passes, it will go from red, which is below the target, to green, which is at the target. If they go over, it will go blue, so they know they've gone too many. This app literally tells it how many passes to do. And then the bow map in conjunction with the bow mag tells it again the compaction rate as well. So it gives that data back to the operator and again back to the engineer remotely. So with bow map, you've got the supervisor's live view mode, which they can look live at what's happening. So they can be remote from the project or another part of the job. And they can click on that project that the operator's uh, rolling on and they can see live exactly what's happening. Um, likewise, when a project's been finished, They've got a supervisor view where they can see, like this project which is completed um, in Peterborough, they can move the screen around and they can see exactly what was completed on that job and all the measurements. So there they can see the number of passes and the temperature of the ground. It's impartial. Uh, what, what's shown is, is factual. Um, it's all backed up by GPS. Uh, you can't forge it. So uh, it just eliminates any doubt. There's certainly a lot less rework involved because you are investigating potential weak areas from the, from the BOMAP reports. Our clients like to know that they're getting the best equipment for the job and that needs to be almost like a discussion that isn't had. And when it comes to using BOMAG machinery, that discussion doesn't need to be had. We had no issues with placing our largest order with BOMAG for next year. We've been using BOMAG for a very long time, so it was an easy decision for us. The work gets done properly for a start. It can potentially be done quicker, saving time, money, emissions, fuel. So there's a, there's a whole range of things which provides a lower total cost of ownership. BOMAG are known worldwide for being the leader in compaction. They will listen to us, they will listen to our customers, and they'll develop solutions that are actually useful on site. And we just want to buy a roller that's fully spec and ready to go. Some might say that Bowmag is on a roll, but I'd never use such an obvious cliche. But we will be sticking with compaction equipment right after we roll this. Axoft and Svantec are your high-end partners for noise, vibration, dust, and air quality systems, sensors, and software. To find out more, visit axoft.co.uk or call 01234 639 550. Now, even though I have barely shaken the Buxton dust from my boots, and even though my poor ankle remains in bits, uh, thoughts are already turning to the mother of all trade exhibitions that will take place in Munich in October. And one of the companies setting out their stall early for Belma 2022 is Dynapack. <laughs>
I think we can expect the Belmer preview details to intensify over the coming weeks and months, and we will do our level best to keep you abreast of it all right here on the Breakfast Show. In fact, we're already working on a new segment to replace our Hillhead highlights that we're planning to call The Road to Belmer. Whether you're planning to attend the show or plan to watch from afar, be sure to stick around for that. So, this time last week, I was getting ready for the trek to Derbyshire ahead of the long-awaited and hotly anticipated Hillhead show. At that time, I promised that we would do our best to take you around some of the key stands at the show to offer up a taste of the exhibition that couldn't, for all those that couldn't make it there in person. Well, we are going to start with one of the show's key exhibitors, the mighty Leap Here. Now, we do have an interview with one of Leap Hair's product specialists that is currently being edited. Um, in addition to that, uh, just by some weird, spooky coincidence, um, my former housemate, Mr. Drew, um, has created a Leap Hair stand blog post today as well. Great minds think alike and all that. And ours as well, Nick, apparently. Uh, Nick, if you'd care to post a link directly to that uh, in the chat, then people can go and take a look. Um, we will be back with more of the Hillhead highlights uh, perhaps another show walk around uh, or stand walk around tomorrow. So be sure to tune in for that one. Now I need to press a button.
Now, demolition contractors from the north of, bo- of the border, way outside the CMA blast zone, lend me your ears. This one is for you. million of your finest Scottish quids have been set aside for the construction of 28 new flats on the site of the former Green Hills Sports Centre in East Kilbride. The new build portion of the works have been won by Glasgow-based merchant homes, but before they can make a start on this important new project, several existing buildings will need to be demolished, and at the time of broadcast, a suitable demolition contractor has yet to be appointed. You can find out more about this project lead and countless more just like it over at buildersconference.co.uk. Alternatively, you can speak directly to Nigel O'Sullivan using the number displayed right now at the foot of your uh, at the foot of your screen. He is standing by to take your call. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right. Back to Beardy. I will. Um, I will start the outro bit in a minute. But Nick Drew very kindly added a link to his uh, Leap Air specific blog. If anyone would like to know more about what Leap Air add on display, then uh, please go and take a look. The link is in the chat right now. Uh, that pretty much wraps up the main part of today's show. I'm going to roll the outro in just a second before leaping gazelle like over into the chat to see what you're all saying today. If you can't stick around for that, then please stay safe. Look, look after yourself, your family, your friends, and your co- colleagues. Have a great day, and thanks for watching. But if you do have the time the inclination, then I will see you on the other side of this. Hey.